in here. All right. I hope you can hear me. I'm Mary Winters. I'm a gerontologist and the owner of About Senior Solutions, and you are watching Visionary Aging. We have a fantastic show for you today. We have uh, somebody who's not just 100, he's 108. He lives here in California. He is a sculptor still. He just wrote a book about five years ago. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we have the fabulous Melinda. She's going to talk about hydration. And it's not just water where you get hydration from. She's going to talk about some of the alternatives so that you can increase your hydration. We also have Steve McCullough with a great caregiver question. Really sounds like a family who really is in need of help. But honestly, it's something that we see a lot of our families discuss in need. And then we also have the fabulous Katie Brandon with the Pasadena Village. She's going to talk a little bit about some of the fabulous resources that they have and the benefits of membership and some of the really great programs that are coming up really soon. So let me go ahead and I'm going to bring on Steve McCullough with us. Uh, for his caregiver question. Steve, how are you good doing? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, we've got a big, I'm good. We've got a big weekend. We have the Super Bowl. We have Valentine's Day. We have Steve's birthday. That's my guy. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a Steven, but uh, at the same time, uh, we have a great care, care, caregiver question today. Why don't you uh, share that with us? We do. So the question is, because um, kids are worried about their parents and worried about them being in a home. Parents want to stay in the home. The kids are worried about them, you know, being able to care for themselves and do the functions. They're concerned that when they come over to the parents' house, the parents know that they're coming over. And so they kind of put on a show. So they want to know how do they go about evaluating their parents and their condition at home without their parents knowing that that's what you're doing like how do you go incognito i guess and evaluate uh someone's condition well um some of that really depends on how independent they are where their cognitive functioning is like and so forth and and sometimes it's just worth a conversation just to say i have a friend and that may be a geriatric care manager we go in and talk about how we can empower you. In fact, that was something I kind of forgot to talk about uh, as we started. We have a lot of ability to stay empowered and control our situation for aging over our lifetime. And if people are having difficulty with that conversation, um, sometimes just talking with a family member that I have a friend who can keep you guys in control, we'll stay out of it. I want you to have a conversation with her because I know you want to stay at home and uh, age in your home. And we want that to happen too, but we think it's important to put a plan in place. We plan weddings. We, pl we plan funerals quickly too. We plan vacations. Sometimes we plan those a year, two years out. Weddings a year, two years mm -hmm. out. And, it, it, you know, it's something that we need to plan for our life because we're living and we want to live the best life we can live. So... Of course, we want to plan that out too to make sure that we can follow through on the wishes and the things that we want. So, people can call our office at 626 Oh, that's my phone number. 626-359-0108. And you can talk to Jenny in the office and she'll make sure that you get whatever information that you need, that you feel comfortable, how you would approach your parent in that discussion that we would have. And we're happy to have it because I think it's really, really, really important. And we're kind of the planning people to make sure that we can. Now I'm going into my little spiel. And roll the boulder off your shoulder and make sure that you're not worried about what's going on. So that's us. That's us in a nutshell. So I think it's have, easier for a third party to come in and have that conversation sometimes too. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Have that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think I know when I come in to meet with families, um, sometimes the family member is fine with having uh, me or one of the care managers who are assigned uh, to sit with the senior to talk with them. And sometimes they don't want to have their, their adult child around. And, but almost always if they do sit there, and everybody's usually pretty good. Every once in a while I get a couple, what? But I think everybody's very surprised at what they're willing to reveal when we sit down and say, okay, let's get to the heart of the matter. And mm -hmm. while you knew you were worried, you really had no idea 
what was really going on. Just kind of like those stories that you never shared with mom or dad uh when you were a kid like yeah i almost killed myself jumping out a window or yeah i almost you know i i right. actually did such and such but i remember my friend's parents told me told us we should not go out to such and such party and there wound up being a shooting in the area soon after like see girls i'm glad we told you not to go out and we're like oh, we kind of did but same thing right. with your parents those things that you think you're hiding and you got away with um our parents do the same things to us so we just have a little role reversal sometimes. But we have a really right. special birthday, too. We have a gentleman named Maury Markov, and he's not just 100. He's 108. So let me go That's ahead awesome. and show some pictures of him, and we'll jump out of the screen here. But um, I am so, so impressed with this gentleman. He is... Um, as I mentioned, 108. And let me go ahead and I'm going to get out of the screen here. He is still sculpting. He lives over in the Palisades. Uh, let's see if I can jump out here so we can get his fourth picture in here. Pretty incredible. So let me go ahead, I'm going to come back in, and I want to invite our Katie Brandon in, who is, um, let's see if she's here. I think she's here. She's got to be here. She's not here. So we're going to go over to, um, we are going to go over to Melinda, and we're going to talk. Oh, no, she's here. Okay, she just jumped back in. All right. There we go. Katie is in the house. Oh, go ahead. Hey, Katie. We lost you for a second. I'm so glad you were able to jump back in. Morning, Mary. Morning. So tell me about the Pasadena Village. You are the executive director, correct? Yes, yes. Um, and so Pasadena Village is a vibrant place uh, to be, but it's not a physical place. So we've got people who are aging in place in their own homes all throughout the Pasadena East San Gabriel Valley, Glendale, Eagle Rock, Highland Park, um, and they are just um, relying on each other as they get older. It's a beautiful place. Oh, that's fantastic. I know the model was created from, you know, as, as all the, uh, the men and women came back from the war, we had all these wonderful communities that were built post-World uh, War II. Um, people bought homes in those locations and they stayed in those locations and the idea was, hey, you know, we're starting to age in place and we need a little help with this and we'd like to have, you know, Sally and Joe and whoever join us and walking it became formalized. And so tell me a little bit about some of the programs that you offer there and I want to hear about the events because I understand you have a great event coming up on Tuesday the 15th, right? Yes, so. we do. And it's actually really related to the history of villages. So. Um, the first village was started in Beacon Hill, Massachusetts, 20 years ago on Tuesday. So we're celebrating National Villages Day, which will be proclaimed to the U.S. House of Representatives. Okay. It's pretty exciting. So our local, yes, our local uh, celebration uh, will be on Tuesday from 10 to noon. Everyone is welcome. And we have some 
beautiful special guests, including the K-9 unit from the Pasadena uh, Police Department, who will do a demonstration, the 2022 uh, Rose Queen, Nadia Chung, and the court, um, Mayor of Pasadena, Victor Gordo, and Representative Judy Chu, um, as well as our best special guest, which is our members of Pasadena Village. So it should be very fun. 10 to noon, we'll have a short welcome at 10 o'clock and a ribbon cutting with the St. Gabriel Chamber of Commerce and then remarks at 11. That's fantastic. And it's kind of neat because we found out about it because my office manager, the About Senior Solutions office manager, Teresa uh, Shore, she is the uh, the chair, vice chair for the Tournament of Roses, and she is working with the, with the, the Queen in Court. Sorry, I'll get that out. Um, and so when she was talking with you about the girls showing up or the women showing up, um, we thought we would have you back on because this is such a great event. And tell me a little bit more about the special programs that you offer over at uh, the Village. Um, thanks, Mary. Um, so ongoing, we have three to five uh, educational and cultural programs that we offer free to the public uh, each month. Um, so this month we had an author come in about uh, Japanese American um, displacement after internment camps wow. coming up. Um, we have a poet speaking in April. Um, we have a, a talk about long-term care planning. Um, we have some great uh, plans to work with uh, scam awareness. Um, so balancing what seniors need to know as they get older and um, fun intellectual stimulating conversations with lots of time for discussion after a guest speaker talks. Um, we have an author coming who uh, found out that she has some surprising history in her family genealogy. And so she's writing a book about um, what relatives she discovered as she was researching. Um, so that should be really fun. And it's an ongoing discussion group that meets twice a month. And this is their special speaker, guest speaker. And so um, everyone is welcome to that discussion group. Um, for our members, we have hiking and walking groups. Our hikers are walking through Griffith Park right now. Um, it's quite a hike. I'm not sure I could keep up with them. Um, but for the uh, for those who want to just zoom in from the comfort of their home, we have about 60 Zooms a month for our members um, that are all run by people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, like Science Mondays and Women Support Group. So lots going on at Pasadena Village. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I know you have a great board who supports you. Um, I know Ron Toffer, the professional fiduciary who does a lot of work for seniors as well. Yes, we're so glad to have Ron. And he spoke about what is a fiduciary. So if you don't know, you can check out our YouTube channel and watch the recording. Yeah. Oh, so you have a YouTube channel. Tell me more about that. We do. Um, so we record um, our educational programs and our cultural um, and art programs. And they're all posted on our YouTube channel for anyone um, to learn and review and read up again. And if uh, video isn't your way of choice. We also have most things written up on our blog so people can just scan quickly to learn about um, all kinds of topics about aging and our community. Oh, neat. What is your favorite topic on aging that you've had on your YouTube channel? Um, I think the things that, because I'm new to working solely with seniors and older adults, um, so things that just really are basic, like what's the difference between home care and home health care? Sure. This is all new to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's important. And it is confusing. So, um, yeah, welcome to the world of, uh, of, of all kinds of jargon and, um, you know, abbreviations for healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you can see, too, why people like us with care management, it's really important to kind of get that direction, too. So I appreciate, I appreciate talking about how you know, how overwhelming it can be, just some of the really basic things um, with this process. But you guys help so much to keep people thriving and living at home because most people do want to, we call it aging in place, but they want to live at home um, throughout their life. So I think there's some really neat programs. You have discount programs and different things too, don't you? 
Um, yeah, so what we did is this year we really took a look at what our membership was um, was like because we didn't want um, the membership fee to be a barrier for anyone to join. Mm -hmm. So we now have a tiered system of, of fees, but everyone is a full-fledged member. Um, and so depending on your income, it can be as little as $10 a month to oh, join wow. Destina Village. That's neat. That's really neat. And about how many members do you have now? We have 136 amazing older adults that I get to get to know. I'm so lucky. <laughs> oh, that's so neat. So do you have a physical office then? We do, off Mountain in Pasadena. So if you come on Tuesday to our in-person celebration of National Villages Day from 10 to noon, um, you can, um, you'll be right next to our office. We're going to be all outside, masks required, so hopefully people feel comfortable coming out and, um, and enjoying the celebration and having a cup of coffee with us. Um, so it's at 236 West Mountain. Um, our office is in one of the suites, but like I said, that event will be outside. So if somebody wanted to take a look at your website and potentially look for membership or some of the programs that you offer, what is your website? PasadenaVillage.org. And you'll see the tab for events so you can see information about what's coming up free and open to the public. And we invite everyone to try us out. You know, come come to an event and get to know some of our members. And um, I think you'll you'll find there's something somebody you can connect with, and maybe you'll meet someone surprising that you never would have met before, which is what um, our members say is one of the most valuable things about being in the village. Katie, can I come? Uh, yes, I hope you do come on Tuesday <laughs> and, and to any of our online or in-person events. That'd be great. That'd be really great. And I see um, Suzette Peterson has um, mentioned. She said, "Wow, this is a really great program. That's really neat to hear." So thank you, that for your comments. What else do you think we should we should know about the village? And um, I just think, just like you, Mary, everyone needs partners as they get older. And so you know, find what you need, find your village wherever you are. And I hope that there's a community that that you can rely on um, before you need it. You know, and I think Pasadena is and the area around it is so lucky to have a village. We've been yeah. here for ten years. Some other communities have villages. There's about uh, over 200 throughout the United States. Um, so if you're not local, you know, look for one or think about starting one and let us know if we can help. Is it always called the village with maybe the city name attached to it? Um, no, um, the one in Claremont's called Aging Next. Um, the one in Huntington Beach is called Care Connections. Um, but on the Village to Village Network website, you can find a local one. Uh, interesting. I did. I did not know that. I knew there was one in uh, in Claremont, but I wasn't completely aware of the name, and I didn't know there was one in Huntington Beach. So people are lucky to have those in those locations. Yes. Too. A lot of them have village in the name, but not. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to Tuesday. There's a lot going on this week for sure. We have Super Bowl, and we have Valentine's Day, and then we have the Village event. So. <laughs> There you go. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Katie. And um, we'll, we'll see you at your event. Okay. Have a great morning. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. That's so fantastic. I love what they do. It's really amazing. And I'm going to look for, um, for our little intro for Melinda. Hold on just a second. We're going to talk about hydration. Whoops. Oh, no, we're not because I keep messing up on the buttons. Hold on here. <laughs> Yay, it's Melinda. <laughs> oh, I have to unmute you or nobody will hear you. So you're in the studio today and I know um, the viewers have seen Pasadena but this is maybe the first time they've seen Echo Park in the background. <laughs> oh you're at Echo Park today. Oh, yeah. Wow. This looks a little bit different. Yeah so where yeah. are all your studios? The drink shop studios. Uh, yeah so Pasadena is the flagship and then this is my second studio that I opened in uh, 2017 well early 2018 end of 2017 so yeah this one uh Small but mighty. It's a little bit smaller, but it has the same amount of machines as Pasadena. So it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> well, I got a good workout in the 
couple new machines that you have in there. So oh yeah, that, it, so. that's we have that one here, and that's why I got it for Pasadena. It's lovely. Oh, it's so good. Um, <laughs> glad you like it. Uh, yeah, so, the body yeah. likes it. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I, th there's a difference there. It's you're not necessarily liking it, but your muscles like it. Exactly. <laughs> So a little bit of background about you. You have a master's degree in nutrition and fitness. And mm -hmm. I would love to talk with you a little bit because it's starting to warm up. I, I know on Groundhog Day, they said that it was going to be another six weeks of winter. And I think that's probably on the East Coast because yeah. we are uh, still in February, mid-February here, approaching Valentine's Day. And I think it's going to be about 90 degrees over the weekend. So yeah, I Forecast is about 90 degrees. And actually, that's when um, especially seniors ha are at more at risk of becoming mm -hmm. dehydrated when the weather changes drastically like that, because it's a little bit, you know, it's it's out of the norm. Um, yeah. Those those spikes in high temperatures. Yeah, for sure. And I know I think typically we're always dehydrated on, you know, to a certain level. So it's great to know. Mm hmm that we can become hydrated not just through water but we can look at foods that have more hydration so yes a little bit about that with us. um and th this is especially important for people who are dehydrated or at risk of dehydration to try to include foods that contain a lot of water a lot of um, fruits and vegetables contain a lot of water, high water content. I think it's uh, watermelon is like 95% water. Um, cucumbers have a very high water intake. A lot of the citrus fruits, oranges, um, what else? Uh, even even um, cauliflower. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, a, there's, yeah. The, the, and um, strawberries even. Um, the melons, um, trying to yeah, think of all the melons. Oh, lettuce. That's lettuces are full of water. Lettuce, like a lot of lettuces. Yeah. Um, but another, um, thing that people with the squash, the melons and squashes too. That's so true. The mm -hmm. vegetable side, um, celery. But, um, one of the things people can do is include broths. So, um, you know, sipping broths or or fresh squeezed juices to get some of that. You know, if you juice those fruits and vegetables, or it's even higher water content. Right. So, right. yeah. Yeah, I had um, uh, I had a client that I went to go see early in the morning. Well, it was early for him. It was ten o'clock. He was just getting up for breakfast, and I could see that he was dealing with some dehydration. So I just went right to the fridge, set him up with some OJ because he was not going to drink water. Yep. I think that's the big thing. If you're not going to do certain things, how about um, how about freezing juice and creating like a little lollipop? Yeah, like, creating the uh, popsicles. popsicles. Yeah. That's great for kids too. If you have a child who's who's dehydrated, um, creating some sort of treat that's that has a lot of water in it. Um, but yeah, you know, our and then and then staying away from foods that are dehydrating. You know, um, heavy heavy meat diets can be very mm. dehydrated. Ah, so, yeah. Um, it's a combination of the two. Um, and then just trying to get in, um, if, if, you know, a, a, a big barrier is if people don't like the taste of water, or don't like drinking water. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, cr making that water an herbal tea, even if you chill it after. So um, what I'll tell people is, you know, steep some hot water or steep the tea bag in the hot water and then refrigerate that. And that it does flavor it um, so that, you know, that makes it palpable. So people like the taste of their favorite tea. So they'll drink that. Um, that's, that's an easier way to get, get some water content. Yeah. The, the herbals and the Rubio's and some of those where they have mm -hmm. no caffeine. And, um, and I yeah. think maybe even freezing fruit inside of your ice cubes and throwing that into your water. I just think we just need to have fun with it and mm -hmm. make sure that we're trying different angles to make it interesting and fun, especially somebody who might not be interested in um, eating or drinking much, um, yeah, really, really important. Lettuces, spinach, all of those things have some great smoothies. You throw a smoothie together with all kinds of extra things with um, lots of high content and hydration. It's, it's, it's help. It helps a lot. So. Yeah, 
And if you can do it throughout the day too, I think that, um, you know, that, that it's a, it's a little bit better for people. Don't, you know, obviously don't wait until you're dehydrated, but if you are, um, try to do, you know, try not to drink a lot of water right all at once. Um, so some eating some of these hydrating foods with a glass of water and spacing the water, the tea or the fruit juice out over several hours and then, you know, eating these uh, replenishing hydrating foods, that'll help mm -hmm. too. Because I think, um, you know, with some serious dehydration, people end up getting sick. Sometimes they throw up because it's too much water. Right. Right. Body can't. And our bowels don't move either. Let's face it. Yeah. Your bowels yeah. don't move. We have um, elimination problems then too. We could go on and on and on. I'm going to bring Steve back on. We're going to talk about, okay. about the weekend and what kind of crazy day it might be um, this weekend. The day of. Hey, Steve. So, Hello. Steve, did you notice that I wasn't in Pasadena? <laughs> I was trying to figure out what angle you were. I didn't know if you were hit, where you were. And I'm like, that like, doesn't that look like really a Pasadena different. location, but I've never been to the other one, so. Yeah. yeah so let's check it out. I like so what it. kind of crazy day is it today? What, yeah. You know, getting close to Valentine's Day. It's going to be my Steve's birthday tomorrow. Um, and I was kind of laughing a little bit because when Katie talked about uh, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the members who are 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, those are the type of tunes he plays. Music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are your What are your plans for for Steve? Um, he's going to be playing over Gem City in Monrovia on Saturday night. So if you want to hear live music, um, you can join them over there in Monrovia. And otherwise, I'm taking him out for dinner over at the Dalry. I have never been. He's never been. It's on a bucket list, and so that's what we're doing. Ooh, very nice. What yeah. place? Uh, the Dalry. Apparently, it was set up um, kind of in the middle of uh, the automobile industry, you know, like home offices. And so they've got this really swanky um, restaurant from the 40s out in Montebello, I think it, not um, Monterey Park, something like that, something somewhere out that way a little bit, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And mm -hmm. this restaurant is, has been a mainstay and there's so many places that were at risk of closing with COVID. And I just thought like Musso and Frank's, I didn't want to miss not seeing them. I saw them, I went there back in December. So I want to try to hit some of these places that are just kind of historical in our, in our area. So, anyway. Yeah. It's there's a good time a to support national local. days today. So I will share a couple of it's national make a friend day. Oh, that's a good one. So go out and make a new friend. It's also National Peppermint Patty Day. <laughs> From Charlie Brown. That's cute. Um, well, I'm thinking the mint, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the chocolate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like those too. And it's, and it's Don't Cry it Over Spilled Milk Day. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess we better be careful oh. about that. So, All right, my friends. Those well, are thank you. three of the many. Thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing your great information. Thank you so much to Katie Brannon. And um, maybe we can all show up on Tuesday at the Pasadena Village event that they're having. So, Sounds great. Black and on there. All right. So, all right. Have a great week. Nice. Happy Valentine's you Day. Too. Thanks. <laughs>